Welcome back, church. Glad that we have these times together here on Facebook and on the website and elsewhere, YouTube. Uh, hoping that we continue to have a good time to get. I gotta adjust this here. It's a little. There we go. I, I felt like I was like way shorter than I am. I, I'm only so tall, so I need to hold on to every inch that I can get. <laughs> um, but today it's our time to look at the first reading for Sunday, the Old Testament reading, which comes out of the book of Second Kings, which we don't get too much out of Second Kings. But in Second Kings, it has some of my favorite stories, such as the the bald Elisha calling uh, out some uh, she bears to attack some kids, making fun of him for being bald. I just told that one to the conference a couple of weeks ago. But here, let us uh, calm our hearts and our minds with that being said. Uh, as we open up with our psalm again that we had yesterday from Psalm 45. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. Your royal scepter is a scepter of equity. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Your robes are all fragrant with myrrh and aloes and acacia. From ivory palaces, stringed instruments make you glad. Daughters of kings are among your ladies of honor. At your right hand stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Hear, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your people in your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty. Since he is your lord, bow to him. The people of Tyre will seek your favor with gifts, the richest of the people with all kinds of wealth. The princess is decked in her chamber with gold-woven robes, and many colored robes she has led to the king. Behind her the virgins, her companions, follow. With joy and gladness they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. In the palace of ancestors you, O king, shall have sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be celebrated in all generations. Therefore the peoples will praise you forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Again, it's an interesting psalm. It, it talks about some things and, and that, that seem a little weird. Uh, the, this decking of, of beauty. The king will desire your beauty. Forget your people in your father's house. The king will desire your beauty. To, to think of it within religious terms, theological terms. Christ yearning for us. God yearning for us. But I love this, with joy and gladness, they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. On Sunday, I preached on praise the Lord, the, the, that phrase that we get, praise the Lord, which is a word for us, one word for us, alleluia. And I wonder, are we appraising people? Are we ones who go into the house of the Lord with joy? Well, our reading, first reading comes from 2 Kings chapter 2. And when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you li yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you, not, do you know that the, today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men in the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind, whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. 
But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a uh, interesting text for us. It's an interesting text because, first of all, it's the end of an era. Elijah is going into retirement, but it's not a retirement in Florida. It's not a retirement in Arizona. It's it's not uh, going off into a nursing home. It is death, in a sense, in the sense that he was and he is no more. God takes him up. He is taken out of this world and taken to another. And Elijah is the, the greatest of the prophets, except for Moses. He, he is the one that comes speaking. He's the one who stood firm in his belief when Baal and and other gods were being preached instead of the one true God. He's the one who who fought the prophets of Baal in that interesting way on Mount Carmel, if you remember that story, uh, with the fire coming down from heaven and consuming his sacrifice while the Baal worshipers could not get Baal to come back from vacation. And it is time for Elijah to go. He's exhausted. Previous to this, he basically says to God, let me die, please. I've got nothing left to do for you. And that's when we get the story of of the still small voice being whispered to Elijah out of uh, out of nothing, basically. A, a still small voice that, that God was not in anything else. And here, Elisha is following him, holding on to his master that he might be with him and be connected to him. And... Uh, Elisha doesn't want to leave him alone, right? I wonder if, one, uh, we are as prepared as Elijah is to be done. Ever. Or if there are things in this world that we could not give up. But I wonder, too, if we will ever find ourselves so devoted in such a way to one person, to one thing, as to follow them to wherever they go, even though they may say, no, you can, you can stay here. And we say, no, I'm going with you. It's almost like a little child following their parent. And Elijah was Elisha's parent in in the Lord. And so then we get to the end. The whole chariots of fire thing where we actually find out it's a whirlwind and you just happen to see a chariot of fire and horses of fire that separated them. He wasn't taken up in that chariot. The, The chariot of fire separates the two of them so Elisha couldn't go with Elijah, God's army, comes down and keeps the two of them apart as Elijah is taken from him. But I love, I've always loved this. When he asks Elisha, what what can I do for you for my last work? What can I do for you? And Elisha says, let me have a double of your spirit. Not because I want to be greater than you. I don't think that's what Elisha's saying. I think Elisha's saying, because I need twice as much as you have, because I'm even worse than you are. I'm in more need of your spirit, of the spirit that God has given you, the power that God has given you, than than you are, because I have less faith. I have less ability. I know my sin, and I know my frailty, and I need God's power even more than he gave to you. That's interesting, right? To think about it in that way. Because then he is given his spirit. He takes up Elijah's mantle and is able to cross the Jordan and and all these things. And people see that he's given the power of Elijah. And Elisha makes a name for himself as well in what he's able to do. And yet, there's something in that small interaction that Elisha is holding on to the truth of the confession that we are by nature sinful and unclean. That's the old version, right? We are captive to sin and we cannot free ourselves. And he understands that. And he needs double of what it was that was given to Elijah in order that he might do the work that God has called him to do. May that be also for us. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, church, go in peace. Serve the Lord. We'll see you tomorrow.